Hola chicos, welcome to another uh, electronics repair video. Um, I've got a couple of uh, mag boxes here. These are uh, IPTV boxes. Um, you see a lot of these here. Um, and basically, this one is supposedly dead. And this one in here is also supposedly dead. Yeah, uh, they're. Uh, Mag 322 is the model number of them, so they're both the same. Uh, so there might be a fair chance I might be able to get one of these working here. Um, we have two power packs as well, uh, and very handy. We have a, we have a, a remote. <laughs> it gets better. I even have to, I even have a, I even have some batteries. Yeah, that's, that's handy. So this is the two we have. Um, so I'm guessing. Probably that these power packs actually work. So let's just uh, check that. I'll just uh, unravel the wires one moment on my uh, test machine. Can somebody explain why, over a period of time, your wires always tangle up? They don't untangle. Because you think, like, if they're crossing over by random, they would randomly, randomly be tangling and untangling simultaneously. Well, no, sequentially, so it wouldn't make any difference, but no, they always tangle up, they never untangle. Um, okay, so, having wondered about that, what's going on with these power supplies? So that's 12 volts on that one. Let's have a look at the other one as well, see what this one says. Oops, it says it's going to jump out of my hand, okay. Let's have a look. So this one here also is 12 volts. So these have a little white light on the front when you plug them in, and obviously the yellow and green on the back as well for the network if there's a cable attached. So the yellow and green are lit up on here, but there's no no white light on the front. So there's power going into it, yeah, but there's nothing lit up on the front. Let's just get a HDMI cable, see if we get any image out of it. So there's a HDMI cable. Uh, monitors come on, actually. Uh, I'll just point the camera at it. Yeah, it's just saying HDMI, no signal. So let's just try it again. So let's unplug that. Plug it back in. So there's no white light on the front. And the monitor's gone off. Okay, so that is definitely... Well, it's not quite dead. But it's kind of dead. What does this one do? So again, this one... This one doesn't light up at all. And it doesn't light up at all. So they're both dead, but like this one's more dead than this one, yeah. So the first thing I'm going to do is just make a, a mark on on this one, so I know which way they are, which one's which. I'll get a little bit of tape or something to stick it on, so I know which is which. Okay, so the one with a bit of tape on is the one that's actually dead, dead, yeah, really dead. Um, looks like, yeah, there's obviously a warranty, so we have to break that to get into this. And these are absolute warranty. Uh, so, the other thing I need to make sure with this, by the way, is there's a MAC address on each one. Uh, so, the circuit board will effectively have a MAC address. And I need to make sure I put the right circuit board in the right uh, case. I mean, fair enough, you can go into the about info, device info, and get the MAC address, but... It would just confuse matters, yeah, if I got mixed up. So, okay, there's our first look inside this one. Let's zoom down, let's see what we've got here. Well, at first glance then, we've got some sort of BGA under here, which will be the main chip, and a rather crookedly mounted uh, heat sink for whatever reason. There's four uh, book regulators here, one, one, two, three, four. This might be two phases on the same one. This is probably a RAM chip, it says Nanya on it or something like that, NA and YA. Uh, probably a RAM chip and a bit, a bit of logic. And unless there's anything on the other side of the board, that's basically it. So these could be effectively on one face of the V core. I bet one of these is for the the RAM. Uh, and the other one might be kind of like a, a, I don't know if it has a PEX or whatever, or maybe the other one just powers up the logic on it. Yeah. So. This is the one that comes out of the case with a little bit of sticker on. So we'll put a little sticker on this one so we know that the two are matching. Now let's have a look to, let's have a look to see if there's anything on the other side of this. Okay, so we'll just uh, take two screws. 
this looks like to me like a JTAG. Uh, maybe there's some way to actually load them or do something with them. Okay, so it's all apart. And there's our little circuit board. Uh, I think there might be uh, there's, a, there's a little switch on the back which might be some sort of reset switch. Might be worth just trying that actually. Okay, so that's one, and there's, there's like a, another voltage regulator here. So it looks like we've got one, two, three, four or five voltage rails on here. Are they marked? Yeah, it says something. It says uh, 1.5 DDR, 3.3, .3. oh, I was telling us what the regulators are. Uh, 0.95, I think it's saying there, oh, which is handy. 0.95 and it's pointing like kind of like to the core can you see it like there yeah uh, this one isn't marked so it's a 12 volt test point yeah it's quite nice this is a few uh, a few useful bits of information marked on it yeah okay that's that um let's have a look at this one first so first thing i'm going to try again and this is the one that doesn't light up at all okay does this reset switch do anything if we hold this in? Nothing flashing, nothing at me. Okay, so this one looks like it's got no power basically to it. So holding the reset switch in doesn't make it do anything. Okay, so first thing then is let's get the meter where we can see it. And let's have a look at some of the voltage rails on this. Okay, well let's have a look first then to see if we've got the voltage supplies on this. So we'll connect the power supply to it and the first thing we'll check is have we got any power coming in is it tripping out the power supply so oh, maybe we don't have is it on here unless it's not a ground well, that's interesting there's no any power coming in so let's go to the power supply again and there's 12 volts there Let's try this as a ground. There must be lots of ground points on here. Is this one of these ones with a broken socket? No, it's like I can't get any sort of like sensible voltage reading out of it. Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look underneath it. It surprises me. Hmm. No, and yet I've got 12 volts. I've got a short. What do you think, guys? Think I've got a short on this? Okay, let's have a look. Want to continuity? Have we got a short circuit? Oh yes, we do have. Okay, so this has a short. Um. Just try to figure out which pin is actually which, but this has a short circuit here to ground. Okay, so we have to trace this through. Um, we can check first then with these voltage regulators, these VRMs, one, two, three of them. Yeah, do I short see? I'll just put it on to resistance range. Do I shorts on the lower voltage ranges? No, that seems to be okay. 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 So what you'll have here, guys, is you'll have effectively four voltage regulators. Oh, and one on the back as well. Let's just check the one on the back. This is a linear uh, regulator. Let's just check this one. One time will probably be ground, if I find it. No, there's no, there's no shorts anyway. None of them are ground and there's no short. Okay. Yeah. So what you'll have is here, you'll have your 12 volts coming in. And then there'll be some controller chips for these various VRMs. The controller chip will probably be one, that one, that funny thing there. Uh, this thing with five pins might be one. Or maybe this chip here might be one, one, two... And then it looks like I suspect this chip here probably drives these two. That's that's my 
initial take on it yeah and somewhere we've got a short circuit on the input so the chances are it's going to be one of these chips or a capacitor around here I think with this because I've got no short on the outputs I might just try um, putting voltage in from my uh, bench power supply and, and see what gets warm yeah but just before I do that let's have a quick look at these chips let's even find a data sheet for these and we can see what you've actually got here okay so I've got it under the microscope so we can have a good look now um, we have this coil here and it's marked here 5 volts and also 1 volt is marked here uh, and I think from what I can see that this 5 volts which is this capacitor goes to this coil and then the other end of the coil will go to whichever chip is driving it which might well be this one um, so if we go from one end of the coil let's get a connection onto this and we go to this capacitor Yeah, we've got continuity. So this is probably a 5 volt supply, I'm just guessing. And then this chip, probably somewhere, connects to it. Well, it certainly connects to there. It connects to there. Well, because it's a short on the 12, it might be difficult to say because you'll probably find it connects to quite a few places because the short is kind of like distorting what you're reading. So I can't say for a certain moment what's driving that. It might well be this one. Maybe the part number will help us as well. And they're all marked D, like D11, D13, D12. So it's a bit hard to say what they are. The other coil, this one, and these two, are fairly obvious that they go to this chip. Can you see the track coming down here, going to this one, and the track from that one going to that one, and that one going to this one. So this chip, uh, TPS65265, I'm pretty sure is either going to be two phase plus one phase. But I don't think so. This is 3.3. This is 1.5. And this is going to be V-Core, yeah. Yeah, 0.95. So that is like effectively a three different voltage rails off the one controller, three book converters. Um and then one of these chips is going to be driving this one. So we can say that with that. Now, fortunately, because we happen to have another one, if I take the other one apart, if that one doesn't have a short, if that one doesn't have a short, because we know the uh, the network lights light up, yeah, I have the green and the yellow on the, on the LAN connector, the RJ45. So I might be able to track it out easier on the other one and figure out which chip this is. And then once I know which chip is, I might well be able to find the short. It's also quite likely that these capacitors here are on the input and this is actually could be where the short circuit is yeah there's two capacitors there on the input and you can see that now and also I think we can see that that input goes to this chip here uh, and it goes to some more capacitors which may or may not go to ground. Okay, let's have a look at the other one. And then that may help us in tra tracing out this one. Okay, so this is the other one. Um, we can power this one up. And we know this has some power coming in because, as I say, this is the RJ45. And when I plug it in, they light up. Uh, you, 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 you can see. Well, they did light up. <laughs> That's interesting, isn't it? Let's see what this one's doing anyway. Let's have a look. So, again, we want onto voltage mode. Let's have a look. So, power coming in. This has 12 volts coming in. So, now we can measure some voltage on this one. So, this is the coil. This one. And that has 5.2. That's a 5 volt supply. Which is what it said actually on the circuit board. So we know it was, it was 5 volts. It says 5 volts. 5 volts. That's 5 volts. That's got that working. This one on this one is 1 volt. This is your 3.3. So they marked. Yeah. And this one is the 
So this appears to have all the voltage supplies. What's on the one on the back? This is this one we can see here. What's this one need? So that's 2.4. On to it. That's 3.3. And that's a 2.6. And this will be the same, I'm guessing. This might be a 2.5 volt supply. I'm not totally sure what that's doing. So obviously, pretty sure it's a voltage regulator. It could be a FET. Okay. So this one appears to have all the voltages present, but it just doesn't work. Let's try with this one. Let's try holding in the reset and see what actually happens. See if it actually light up or do anything again i'll probably hold in the reset button and then power it up while i'm holding in reset that might be a good idea with this one just this is the led at the front so we'll soon see if it lights up or does anything okay so this appears just to be effectively dead this is getting quite warm the chip but it's not doing anything. So this might maybe want reflowing or something. But we can use this one, guys, to to figure out what's wrong with the other one. Yeah. In fact, we can probably use this one to fix the other one. So let's have a look. We know we've got the 12, the 12 volts coming in. And this is a 5 volt regulator. So from the 12 volts, I'm pretty sure we can just go put it onto continuity. This is 12 volts. Obviously, there's no short on this one. This is 12 volts, yeah. This little capacitor is on 12 volts. So either of those components could be 40 on the other one, yeah. They definitely go to 12 volts. What else goes to 12 volts? This goes to 12 volts, yeah. So does any other pin on this chip go to ground? If so, this possibly could be the, could have a short circuit. Yes. Let's get out it. That pin goes to ground. So that's a possible path to ground. Is there anything else that could be short on this? Let's have a look where does the 12 volts go. So. That's a resistor and there's no path to ground there on the other side of it. I'll use the microscope. It's easier for me. There's another capacitor here. That could be short. There's another capacitor here that can be short. Is there any more? Well, there's some wet ones up here, maybe. Yeah, there's a few possible things here that can be short on the other one. So I think what we'll do is that other one. Let's um, remove this chip first, yeah, so no voltage can come through to here, basically. And then once we remove the chip, let's have a look. And the reason I know this chip is driving this is because we know it's got 12 volts. We know it's got ground. If we go from this end of the coil, I'm sure that comes to here as well. I'm pretty sure it'll come to here. Let's have a look. Yeah. So this looks like 12 volts in, output to the coil and ground. Okay. Okay. So we'll take that chip off, the other one, and then let's have a look to see, stick in some voltage and see what gets off if that chip isn't short. The easiest way I find for uh, changing or removing chips like this one is to put some flux on it. Okay. Then we can get uh, some leaded solder, and I'll try and bridge all the pins on each side together. Um, and that will form effectively an alloy with the lead free solder and reduce the melting point. So let's just if I just get a nice blob of solder on this side. I'm trying to get it to go across all three pins if I can. Yeah, there it is. You can see it's bridged over it. And the same on this side. Yeah, I've got it. Yeah, it's bridged over it. So effectively now, if I heat this up with my hot air. This should melt before anything else melts because it's, it's lead free on the other components. And it should come off basically before anything else melts. So nothing else should kind of like go walkies here. So let's have it. Let's see if we can do it. So we just uh, balance. I'll get up onto the metal. Oops. I'll pick my soldering iron up. Oops. Captain Chaos strikes. I've picked the soldering iron up. 
So yeah, bounce is not like a weird off an old satellite receiver. It just keeps the thing off the bench. And I can kind of put it here so it kind of overhangs the hen at the end a bit there now. Um, I should be able to get a play, yeah, get in this way. Just try to get some view so you can see it. So yeah, I should be able to lift the chip like so. And now let's just uh, get in with the hot air. So I've set to uh, 450 degrees. I've just uh, put the airflow up to maximum. And I'm quite confident that this will come off before I manage to, you know, unsolder any of the nearby components. I mean, if I mess it up, I've always got the other one. But let's, let's see if it just gets come off now. So I'm on the chip. And the theory is that this will actually melt before anything else melts. There we go. Okay, so that's off clean. So now we just need to get the microscope and have we make sure we didn't dislodge anything. And we need to just get some solder braid and clean that up. And then we can look to see if that was the short and figure out where it is if that wasn't the short. So you can see that worked really well, guys. Um, nothing else even moved because the lead, the lead, lead free solder never even melted. Yeah, this was off and gone before that even had a chance to melt. Okay, so we need to get rid of this blob of, uh, or two blobs of uh, lead free leaded alloy, which I've now made, yeah, by mixing the two solders together. Let's just get this flat, there we go. So we'll just uh, get this off here. I'll use the microscope, it's much easier for me to look down. Um, this is why, guys, you need a stereo microscope, not a mono microscope, like a USB. I had one. Quite an expensive one, and it was useless for salt. I mean, it's great for great for looking at things, but no good for actually working on them. Okay, so that looks like I've pretty much uh, cleaned that up. So we've got a bit of a little bit of uh, isopropyl, and just let's to see if that's actually now nice and clean. Okay, so you can see how well that came off there, and you can also see. That I didn't dislodge anything, yeah. So when you're working in areas like this, don't mess around with caps on tape and whatever. Just do what I did, yeah. Bridge all the pins on the device with uh, leaded solder and just remove it like that, yeah. I didn't, I didn't. Well, I might have slightly melted the back of this, but you know, <laughs> not much. Okay, so how's that got rid of our short circuit? Well, no. There's still a short there. On the capacitor as compared to the the other one uh, which doesn't have a short yeah so the short's still there so what we need to do now is get our uh, bench power supply stick 12 volts in we can quite happily stick 12 volts into this now at whatever current it wants to draw and let's see if something gets warm uh, so i'll get the bench power supply ready and then uh, we'll have a play with that I can set the bench power supply down to 12 volts quite safely. Okay, 12 volts on that. Okay, it's close enough. Um, connect the uh, lead. I actually have a lead here with it, with actually like a. I can show you. Yeah, one of these on the end of it. Um, I'll turn the current down. Uh, just to a low current at the moment so i'm going to plug this into here and i'm expecting this effectively voltage to go to zero because i've totally told it to supply a few milliamps yeah so the lights come on it's just sending like 0.16 of an amp into there at the moment which probably isn't enough to get anything warm um but we can now effectively turn up the current yeah so we can give it a little bit more current so let's give it about an amp let's just see if anything's going to warm up on this. So there's about an amp in there now. Oh, something's getting hot. Something's getting hot, and I think it's one of these capacitors. Let me just drip a little bit of uh, alcohol onto it. Um, I'll just disconnect it one moment. I think it's this capacitor here. So what we do is we'll get a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol. One moment, guys, just find something to do it with. Okay. Cotton wool bud, yeah, cotton wool bud. So, a bit of alcohol in here. 
I think already you can probably see that that's warmer than anything else because it's it's evaporating, yeah? And that's without the power on. So we get some alcohol on here. And once again, I'm going to connect my power. And let's see what happens. So here we go. Yeah, straight away. So one of these two capacitors here is short circuit. Um, I'll remove... The, well, I, I might as well remove this one first, which is just easy to get at. And if it's not that one, it's the other one, yeah? So let's get those removed off the board, and then let's see if we can find the short. There's no doubt several ways of doing this, but the way I tend to do it, I'll show you. There's again a nice big BC3 tip on the end of soldering iron. Uh, probably worth getting a little bit of flux. So a little bit of flux on the capacitor. Or thereabouts, yeah. Uh, get the uh, leaded solder again. Nice big blob. And I can now touch both sides of this capacitor at the same time. So I can just get hold of the capacitor. Uh, again, this is much easier if I actually look down the microscope. Uh, I need my stereo vision, guys, but you know this. I can now heat it up, and there it's off, yeah. So that's the big one off. So let's have a look now to see whether or not we still have a short circuit on this board. You can hear it, yeah. Let's have a look to see if we can have a short circuit. And we don't. Okay, oh, or do we? No, we don't have. Let's find the little capacitors. The capacitor's actually here. Yeah. Let's try, let's try, let's try it. Well, that's interesting because I'm not seeing a short then. I don't expect to see it or hear a short. Yeah, I've got a good contact again. It? It's not. It's not bleeping. Let's go back to our board again. Let's be sure that we. Where is this short? Yeah, let's just check if it's still here. I can measure across where I'm taking this capacitor off. Yeah. Again, I'll just look down the microscope, makes life easy for me. Let's just check again. We do still have a short circuit. So, in that case then, it's going to be the other capacitor. Uh, we'll just um, take a little bit of braid first and just clear this blob of solder up here. And then I'll, I'll remove the other one the same way I just removed that first one. So once again, you get a bit of... Just get off there, nice and clean. Get a little bit of leaded solder, and we'll just take this one off as well. Okay. In my experience, actually, it often is the small one. When you get when you get a situation like this, it often is the small one. Okay, one moment, guys. I just got a telephone call coming in. Okay, so let's remove the other one. That's obviously where the short is. And in actual fact. Quite often when I have this situation of like these two capacitors in parallel, it often is the small one that's the actual short circuit. Uh, but to be, uh, also to be honest, I probably would have di had difficulty removing this one without removing the other one first. So yeah, let's just try uh, get a bit of leaded solder on the end of the bit. And we'll come in from here and we'll just uh, take this one off the same way as the other one. I'm tempted not even to replace this capacitor. Uh, it's just on the input. Yeah, it's off. You see again, that came off easily. Uh, that, that's my technique, guys. Uh, some people use hot air. Uh, personally, I think that's the best way to do it. So again, let's find our little capacitor, which is here. Very small. And let's see if this is where the short is. It should be here, because one of these was definitely short. And again, I can't find the short circuit on the capacitor. Okay. No, I can't find the short circuit on that capacitor. So let's have a look at the board again. And let's see if our short has gone. Sometimes when you desolder them, it effectively will no longer be short. So again, let's get into this uh, board. And let's have a look to see if our short circuit has gone. And it has gone, yeah, you can no longer hear it. Yeah, that's the continuity. 
nothing. So that small capacitor was definitely short. Um, I'm going to put the big one back on, and I don't think I'm even going to bother with that little one. These are only filter capacitors on the on the supply valve coming in. So let's uh, put this on. I mean, I, I could put one on, but I honestly don't really feel it's necessary. Um, that can go there. I'm just being lazy today, guys. That's all it is. So uh, let's just get this thing back soldered into position. I'm sure if you like, you can suitably chastise me in the in the comments that I was be, I was too lazy to re replace that faulty capacitor. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to get on with the job. So let's just see if we can just solder this back onto here now. That's one end soldered. Okay. Turn it round. Keep it in the middle where you guys can actually see it. Yeah. And let's just hold this in place and solder the other end down. I'll be even more honest, probably neither of these capacitors are actually essential. They're just filters on the input, and you'd assume the power supply's got some filters in it. Okay, short circuit's gone, yeah. We still have contact to there, and this end is ground. Yeah, okay. So that's done. So now let's replace the small chip that we desoldered and then let's see if this actually works. So replacing the chip is pretty much the same technique we just used with the capacitor. Um, I put a bit of flux on there because that actually helps. Uh, I'm going to try and come in now from one corner. This is the fine solder. And just if I can just solder the first pin. Problem with this, sometimes the thing will stick to the... Uh, soldering iron it's quite often a good idea just to hold it down with the tweezers which i find a little bit fiddly because i'm right handed and i've got the soldering iron in the right hand let's just see can we get at least one pin to stick down doesn't matter which okay so we've got one pin stuck down now so all it's a matter of now is just sort of going around the chip it was not going to move and we can just solder the other pins so it's coming from this end i could use a finer tip uh but i'm I'm pretty good with this one. I'm about to solder bridge on there. I'll soon clean that off. It's gone anyway, Luke. You'd be surprised how much you can do with a large tip. Yeah, I've got loads of finer tips, but that thing gets a lot of heat in, and I find it solders very quickly and very well. Okay, so that's looking good. Uh, not quite happy with this capacitor. Just clear a bit of gunk off it. There you go. Get a bit of solder off that rather than gunk okay so let's just tidy that up and let's have a look to make sure it looks good and just double check we have the uh, chip the right way round and then um, if all that's looking good then we can try this yeah so uh, let's get a bit of uh, isopropyl again let's have a look what we've got okay a little bit of uh, a cotton wool board sometimes it's better to use actually kitchen roll to do that with I'm not totally happy with the soldering on the middle pin at the back of it I'm pretty sure it is soldered but I'm just going to come back in again and I just on that one now I'm happy now I'm happy so it was again a little bit of uh, this and then, yeah, let's get a bit of kitchen roll and just dry that off. And then we can actually have a look to see how well it's soldered. Okay, so there we have it, nice and clean. Um, the chip's the right way around. There's like a little uh, dot here. You can just about, just about see it. There's a dot there. And we can compare that with the other one anyway. So we can just go with this one. As you see, it's the right way. You can probably see the dot a little bit clearer on that way. And the writing's the same way up here, the 200, which is a part number whatever it refers to so that's in place there we can just check again on the meters to make sure we don't have any shorts anymore just slipped on there okay so the short circuit's definitely gone i'm actually reading the resistance there now that's interesting i'm not sure what the other one read let's get my uh, glasses on so i can see what it's actually saying oh i think i'm reading it backwards i think this end is the 12 volts yeah reading in this polarity 
And it's saying 69.3. Come on, read. Out of interest. Oh, that's interesting because they read differently. Mm, that isn't right, guys. That, that isn't right. Look. So, this one reads... Well, now actually about 90 ohms. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's giving me various readings. Yeah, 92 ohms here on the 12 volts coming in. And this one, although this is a faulty one, all the voltages are there, yeah. And this one's reading... Like much, I mean, that is actually reading in mega ohms, two mega ohms, yeah. Whereas this one is reading 90 ohms, 85 now, so it kind of like varies, and that's a bit strange. That's not right, and I'll show you why. I mean, what we have on here is we have four book regulator coils, three of them are controlled by this, and one of them is controlled by this, or oh, this is controlled by one of these chips. And I'm pretty sure it's this one because it goes to there. So, the 12 volts doesn't power any of the circuitry on this board. The 12 volts only goes to the capacitors on the input and to the power to these regulators. The power to this is almost certainly from the 12 volts. We'd have to just check, but pretty sure it will be. And the power to this is 12 volts. This low resistance we're reading, let's have a look to see if that actually matches the resistance from any of the coils to ground. So I'll get onto ground. So this is reading 14, it's just changing a bit because capacitor's charging, but 13k. This one's reading about 20 ohms, effectively that's like the V core, yeah. This one is reading is dropping but it's in the kilo ohms range six six and a half kilo ohms and this one is reading 1.7 kilo ohms so this resistance that we're reading here is 83 can't be a short through either that chip or this chip into the coils but it shouldn't be as low as that this is the one that doesn't work but all the voltages are there so on this one all the voltages are actually present on, on these and again we can just have a check actually so this one mm, kilo ohms this one 1.7 kilo ohms this one oh, 16.8 and this one mega ohms yeah so it's pretty much like ah. Oh, that, another interesting thing on this one, the V core reads like 14 ohms. It's reads I've got a good connection on it. And on this one, the V core reads about 19 ohms. Maybe this has got a 40 core. That's why it doesn't give a picture. In fact, all the voltages there because the resistance is a really different resistance on this core. Okay, so where is this low resistance coming from? Well, it's not a short in either this chip or this chip to one of the voltage rails. It could be this chip itself, or it could be another capacitor around here. I think with this one, I'll probably uh, just, in fact, yeah, I will. I'll, I'll desolder the chip again. And if I'm still reading the low resistance, I'll stick 12 volts in again. And let's see where the current's going, because there will be quite a bit of current. I'll just get a bit of paper and I'll show you what it would be. Let's put it on a bit of paper and it'll all be very clear, if it wasn't very clear already. So, we have 12 volts coming in. Okay. This is where we had the capacitors. In fact, they're not electrolytics, they're just capacitors, yeah. The big one and the, and the smaller one. Okay. And these we're going to ground. And this is where I had the short on this one. Okay. So that's gone now. Now we have basically we have the 12 volts coming in to a control IC, a pulse width modulator. Okay. 
one of the ones that's near where the 12 volt, uh, the uh, the jack socket is. And from here, internally in this chip, effectively, are two MOSFETs. So we have, I don't know if I can draw them, not enough space. We have two MOSFETs in here, okay? And the chip is controlling, so it's pulsing these on and off. And from this pin, which is the junction of the two MOSFETs, we have the inductor coil. We have capacitors, probably several capacitors, to ground. And then this gives to the voltage rail, the load, yeah? And uh, they marked on the board, this one was 5 volts. And then we have, I think it was 3.3, 1.0, 1.5, whatever it was. So we have that there, yeah? And we also have coming from here, go into another chip. This is the one that controls three coils, yeah? And internally, again, there'll be three sets of these MOSFETs internally. If I've got space to draw them again. Yeah. This end goes to ground. This end goes to 12 volts, yeah? Again, the controller drives it. We have a coil. Output. Capacitor. Right. And we have three of these inside this chip, so I won't bother drawing the MOSFETs again. But we have another one. Yeah. To ground. And we have the third one. Capacitors to ground. Okay. So that's basically what's inside ours. And this is three times pulse width modulator and three coils. Um, they were marked on the board what we have, so we can just uh, double check. So, uh, not in any particular order, we have uh, 3.3 volts, we have uh, 1.5 volts DDR, that's for the RAM, and we have uh, 0.95 volts, which is for the, the core, the processor, yeah? So that's the voltage we have coming out. Now what I was just doing, I was measuring the resistance from here to ground, yeah? And when I measured that, I have about whatever it was, 80 ohms, yeah? And then from each of these, co these coils to ground, I measured the resistance. And this one was about 16 ohms, yeah? 16 or 16 ohms. And these were high, kilo ohms, yeah? I don't know many kilo ohms, and this was in the kilo ohms range, yeah? And this one again was in the kilo ohms range. So those three are high, and this one's low, which is what you expect, because this is drawing the most power, yeah? So, where is this low resistance? Where is it? Well, it certainly isn't a short through one of these MOSFETs into the coil. And the reason being, because the resistance I read here, 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 and here, doesn't match that. Yeah. If this had read 16, I could have said straight away, it's this chip inside it is a short circuit and the high side MOSFET, the one that 12, to the 12 volts, yeah? Because I'm reading the same resistance, but I'm not. So we know the short isn't there. We call it a short, it's a low resistance. We know it's not there. So where is it? Could be a problem with this chip itself, or it could be another capacitor on here. But that's probably about the only place it could be. There's one other voltage regulator we could have. So we'll just check it. And that's the one on the other side of the board. Yeah, this one here. Now, I don't know if this connects to the 12 volts. It may or may not, but we can prove it. Okay, so do any of these pins read 80 ohms? Well, that one's 2.98 mega ohms. 2.3, 230 ohms. And that's in the kilo ohms again. This will be... 230 ohms, yeah? So in the case of this one, this regulator isn't connected to the 12 volts. And I know it's not connected because none of the pins read 80 ohms to ground. It's probably connected to one of these three. I mean, for example, I don't know, but for example, in fact, no, let's even see if we can figure out which one it's connected to. Let's, let's go past examples. What the resistances we have, okay? This one, is reading six and a half K. This one's reading 1.7. So, uh, yeah, the 3.3 is reading 6.5. 
and the 1.5 is reading is it 1.7 Yeah, 1.7. Yeah, and that one, the 5 volts, is reading about 15, 13k. Okay, so that's reading about 13k. Let's go try and regulate on the back again. Do any of the pins on here match these? Yeah, so in other words, we know they're connected to there. Um, obviously, I could just check if they go there, but let's have a look. Let's, let's do it this way. That reads 2.9 meg, so that doesn't go to any of those. That reads about 6.5k, so that matches what I see here, yeah? And then the other pin, which will be the output, the middle here, as I say, is reading about 230 ohms. Yeah. So what we can say for certain is, that supplies a 3.3, and from here, there's another voltage regulator, yeah? and this is supplying an output voltage, and the load is about 230 ohms, yeah? 230 ohms. And my guess is this, which is a, would be a MOSFET, it's not a voltage regulator, because this pin would go to ground, this will be the gate of a MOSFET, it'll be a MOSFET. There'll be capacitors here. And this will be another voltage rail. And my guess, because this is 3.3, and we've only got 1.5, this is almost certainly 1.8 volts. Yeah, with that measure. When we get one working, we can, we can do that. So that is analysing what we have here. What have we proved? We've proved that this low resistance here is not caused by a short through here, a short through here, through here, through here, or through here. It's something else. So first of all, I'm going to remove this chip, yeah? And we'll see if it goes away. If it doesn't go away, I'll put 12 volts back in. And what you'll find is now, if go back to the resistor again, the capacitor. It's reading 82 ohms, yeah? So we can work out how much current is flowing here. Ohm's law, yeah? V, I, R in a triangle. You do it this way because volts equals I times R. Volts is current times R, yeah? R is volts divided by I, and I is volts divided by R. So we want to know the current, yeah? Which is volts, 12, divided by 82. Yeah. Let's get the calculator. Let's work out what that actually is. I can see roughly it's going to be... If that was 12, it'd be 1 amp. If it was 24, it'd be 2 amps. If it's 48... It'd be no, sorry, sorry. Yeah. If that was twelve, it'd be one amp. If it's twenty-four, it'd be half an amp. Forty-eight would be a quarter of an amp, and ninety-six would be about an eighth of an amp. Point one two five milliamp, one hundred twenty-five milliamps. Let's see what you've actually got. I guess I'm on my phone. That's my calculator. I do have a calculator. Uh, calculator. Yeah. So let's have a look. So twelve. Divided by 82. Yeah. 146 milliamps. Go to 150 milliamps, yeah? So flowing down through this somewhere is 150 milliamps. Going to waste, I would think. Um, how much wattage is that going to dissipate? Well, watts equals V times I, which is 12 times 0.15, yeah? So that is. So we clear the calculator. So see if something's going to get hot. 12 times 0.15 equals 1.8 watts. Yeah. That's enough to warm something up. Yeah. So now let's do it. So first of all, I'm going to remove the chip. See if it's gone. If it hasn't gone, let's stick 12 volts in and then let's see where it is. Oh, just before the sharp-eyed ones of you mention this in the comments, yeah, it'll be all over the comments section if I don't point it out. Yes, the, short, the low resistance could be in this chip. Yes, it could be another capacitor. And yes, it could be this one. Okay, now let's remove that and let's have a look. 
Oh, and another uh, quick point, it should have, um, probably was clear. The reason I'm figuring this is 1.8 volts is because this is 3.3. And for this type of regulator, the output must be less than the input. So it can't be more than that. And that was just like the most obvious uh, guess after 1.5, yeah. So that, that's how I kind of worked that one out. We'll see if I'm right, actually. We can get one powered up. Right, I've removed the chip. I partly did that because it was so easy. And secondly, I think we have a bit of a surge cause this to blow, I don't know. But anyway, no one. It can go back on. Do I still have this low resistance? Yeah, I do. Okay, it's now 69 ohms. It's changing as well with the temperature. 71 ohms. As it's like cooling down, it's going up. That must go to this chip as well. Just poke around it. You know, I'm sure we'll find it. Uh, uh, yeah. So it obviously goes to this chip as well. Right, let's stick 12 volts back into this. And let's see now. I was like, cool down first. I put 12 volts in and let's see what gets warm. What I've done is I've actually uh, soldered the little uh, chip back in place again. And let's just zoom right down on this and then we can power it up and see what happens. Here then is the power supply again. So I've got it set to 12 volts. I'm now going to turn the current up. This will drive up to 5 amps. Now, we know because of the resistance of this, it shouldn't draw more than about 1.2 or 1.3, 1.4, 1.4, plus whatever it wants to draw if it's working. So once again, let's connect our power to this and let's just look on the power supply and see how much current this actually draws. Okay, it's definitely going to short circuit somewhere, yeah? Just this thing, there's something somewhere is effectively, once it is powering up, is acting as a short. Um, and at that current, something's going to get hot. See where the problem is. I, I'll, no, I'll do the other way. I'll turn the current down, actually. Yeah. And now let's just turn the current up so it's drawing. Maybe. An amp. Yeah. Now is something getting hot. Something down here is getting hot again, guys. Something down here again. Let's uh, do what we did before. Let's get a bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol. Get a cotton wool bud. Try it on again. It might be this other capacitor, actually. Yeah, it is. It's... See that? Okay. Straight away. Turn the power off. Yeah. Put some alcohol in. Yeah. Get it under the microscope. It'll look really good this way. One moment. There we go. We have it under the microscope. We have uh, a decent amount of alcohol on here. Nice little pool. Now let's connect the power. Yeah? Ready? Here we go. You see it? In this area, yeah? That, that is, you see it smoking a little bit. Okay, so the problem here is the capacitor. And um, that's the one that I actually took off and put back on. Uh, maybe one was short and the other one was already reading low. Um, so yeah, okay, let's get that capacitor off the board and then let's see what this does. Okay, so I've, I've removed the capacitor. I'm not going to replace it at the moment. I'm just going to power this up without the capacitors. These just act as filters effectively to stop any ripple coming in from the supply. Um, I should replace at least the big one. I'll probably replace both. So if it works now, I need to put something in here. I don't know the value. I mean, I can take the ones off the other board, but they're not critical. So this little one, probably a 0.1 microfarad, 100 nanofarad would be fine. And this one, 4.7 or something like that. Um, as long as they're more than 12 volts, I think, you know, 16 volts or, or more would be good. So I've got the power supply on again. Um, we'll just give it a bit of current. because this, These things draw about an amp, or a bit less, half an amp. 
So let's turn the current up. And what we're going to do is now, we're going to power it up again, see what current it's drawing, and see if the light comes on. Okay, so let's give it a go. Yeah, the LED is on. That's a good sign. Let's see if we've actually got a picture coming out of it. Uh, let's try it. Let's find a uh, HDMI cable, which is around. So, yep, I have. One moment. Okay, so I have the HDMI cable put in the back of it. Uh, let's power it up again and let's see if it's actually working. There's the lights on. Good sign. Um, switch my monitor on. Let's have a look if we've actually got a picture coming out of this now. And the current draw looks sort of okay. I do have a picture. Uh, well, I might, you know, nothing yet, but let's see. The blue light's on <laughs> the monitor. That's a good sign. Let me just, oh, yeah, I have a picture. Okay. So there we have it. Um, I did get a picture initially, and it wouldn't boot up. It was, like, stuck in a loop. So I tried it back on the original power supply, and it didn't help. So basically on these, you hold, hold this button in and power it up. And after some seconds, this reset button will start to flash on the on the light slowly. And if you keep it held in for another five seconds, it starts to flash rapidly. Wait to about ten flashes and let go. And what happens now, it basically goes into its, uh, like its factory reset, yeah. So we can just go, okay, to confirm. It's loading, yeah. So this one's now working. So the question is now, is what to do with the other one? Yeah, look, it's on, it's on its initial screen ready to go so we've got one good working one and the thing is what to do with this one well i've got two thoughts on this my first one is that the the, the core is probably faulty because it reads a low resistance to this one but the other one is a possibility is there's an eprom chip maybe on here somewhere it's not that one because that goes to the hdmi there's another chip here but i think there might be some more chips tucked under here i can just see the edge of something here and here so let's see if we can get the heatsink off this one and if there's an eprom and it's one that i can program with my programmer let's re let's read the eprom off this one and write it to this one and see if it will then work okay so i'll just get the heatsink off okay so the heatsink's off so let's have a look to see what's under that. i'll say it's off again i've removed the two plastic clips uh, yeah, it's off. Okay, so what we have here? Well, we have something that looks suspiciously like an EEPROM to me. And that's this thing. Let's get under the microscope and see what that actually is. Okay, well, actually, that looks even even more than suspiciously like an EEPROM, because it is an EEPROM. Now, if I just find the uh, torch, let's get that all right. Item. Let's have a see what this ship actually is. Okay, so it's a 25Q03213. So I'll make a note of that and let me see if my EEPROM programmer can actually program these chips. I had a look and my programmer will program um, 25Q032C. No, sorry, 25LQ032C. But it doesn't seem to list this chip. Um, so this is one for me to go and ask on uh, bad caps most likely about reading and programming this chip if I can do so then I think we've got a good chance of, of, of fixing this one as well um, so yeah okay that's hopefully the topic for another video then um, we certainly have a success with this one yeah with the other one okay so just one more thing we'll just do before we end this one and this was just, is to see out of interest, whether the output of this is actually 1.8 volts, which I kind of worked out from that bit of reverse engineering. Just out of interest then, this is the ones I've just repaired. Uh, I'm interested to see what voltage is on this regulator on the back and whether in actual fact in reality it is, the 1.8 volts that I kind of suspected it probably from a bit of reverse engineering. Okay, so we can just power this up. Let's just have a look. So this is ground. So here we have 2.5, 2.5, oh, it's a 2.5, oh, yeah, so 3.2 coming in, 3.3 coming in, and it's 2.5. Thinking about it, yesterday on the first half of the video, I measured that. Okay, so we know that's actually a 2.5, not a 1.8. Okay, guys, so um, one fixed, yeah, one result, 
one possibly we can try refresh the um, EEPROM and if you guys are interested one moment Here I have five more. These are Mag 250. It's an older model. But since we've had uh, some success here, yeah, uh, let's have a look at these probably next week. Uh, it's Friday today. And see whether we can have some more. If you guys like this video, that is. Yeah, if you want, if you want to see me fixing that lot, get in the comments over the weekend. And if there's enough of you... And I'm not going to say how many I need. <laughs> if there's enough of you, we'll get on to it. Okay, guys, have a good weekend now. See you all soon. Adios, chicos.